Hello, this is not the Skoda, it's a different car. And you may ask, isn't it a bit weird how it's only my second video on this channel and I'm already introducing new cars? And to that I say, yes. This Mercedes CL500, because that's what it is, was imported here from Japan, and it's a car that my dad has recently bought. So, even though it's not my car, I just had to make a video on it because it's very interesting and, first of all, very nice. But, before diving any deeper into the CL500, we need to go back in time to around a week ago, to the day when we went out to buy the car. And so, the car was located more or less 3 hours away from me, and even though for American standards this is probably just your everyday commute with LA traffic, for the Polish ones it is safe to consider this a road trip. So, after firing up the good old Skoda and spending my entire life savings on a single tank of gas, we were ready to set out. Well, not for long, because almost immediately after entering the highway I needed to take a piss break. After emptying my balls, we did some more driving and arrived at the place where the car was waiting for us. We took a quick look around the car and, well, you can probably guess it, decided to buy it. So, after filling out the paperwork and having a very long chat with the previous owner over some coffee, we were ready to go back home. As we arrived, the day was slowly coming to an end, but there was one more thing to do, and that was to go for a drive. And that is a very quick one. The next day, the obvious first thing to do was to, well, wash the car, and so I started with the interior. I used this weird sticky roller that you're supposed to use on clothes, but it worked very well in like removing all of the hair and dust from the softer materials in the car. And after that I just did the usual, so you know, vacuum the whole car. Then use some detailing brushes and a couple cleaning products. Clean the letter and well, that's the interior done. Well, not counting everything else I've skipped. Then I've recorded this very long footage of me washing the exterior, just giving the car a quick hand wash. And that brings us to the floor mats. The car had these like old black floor mats, but when we were buying the car, the owner said something along the lines of like, oh yeah, I also have a second set of floor mats, but I didn't really bring these out because I figured you guys wouldn't want them. And I thought like, I mean, cool, but can we at least see them? And it was like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. So he brought them out and I immediately was like, nope, nope, we need to get this, we're getting these. And that's because, I mean, they look so good, like, just look at these. I feel like they make the interior just feel that much cozier and way more interesting than just having normal black ones. And so even though they're probably not everyone's cup of tea, they're definitely my cup of tea. And so with the car clean and the whole cleaning montage out of the way, let's go into vlog mode and talk about the car. It's up to you from now on, real life me. Hello. Yes, here I am. And we're inside because the weather is kind of terrible. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but it's raining constantly, so, you know, rain isn't really the kind of weather you want to be in when walking around the car with the doors constantly open, uh, so this is what you have to work with. But yeah, we'll still take a quick tour around the car. And the first thing I'll do is just keep on being amazed on how well preserved this car is. I mean, really, like, this is 20-year-old paint, and just look at it. It's immaculate. No scratches, no dents, anywhere. It's clear that the previous owners were taking good care of this car, and, uh, you know, it was maintained very well. The car has also great service history, so that's nice. And I mean, yeah, you can see like the paint starting to, I guess, get a bit yellow, just a little, but that's probably just thanks to the car being from Japan and the Japanese climate. But it's, again, it's, it's very, very minor. So, you know, it's nothing just like with buff and polish can fix. And also the headlights are just starting to get yellow, like just a little bit. You can really even see it on camera. It pops out a bit more in real life. And this is something that will have to get addressed sooner or later because you can have the nicest car around and if you have faded or yellow headlights, it just looks crappy, I guess. And I'm not even exaggerating. Like as of today, I didn't find a single scratch on this car. I have found a single rust bubble over here, 
and this is the only spot of rust I found over here, this one. I don't know if you can see it. So this is like the only place in the car that is actually rusting. And it's very small and yeah, we'll fix it as soon as possible because, you know, we don't want it spreading. But literally, this is the only place in the car where there's rust and I didn't find even a single scratch or dent anywhere. Like, how impressive is that? It's a 20 year old car. It's from 2003. The same thing goes for the wheels, even though they're really not up to my taste specifically. Well, they're in very good condition. These are 20 year old wheels and they don't have any car brush. They're not oxidizing, you know, they look fairly brand new to me. Again, very impressive. Over here in Poland, Japanese imported cars have had this reputation for many, many years of always being the best examples you can find for very good money and, you know, just always being immaculate and ready to go. And basically you, you just buy the car from Japan, it arrives and you have to do nothing with it. And it's just perfect showroom condition. And even though recently they have started becoming sort of notorious for not really well being that vehicles from Japan have, I guess, different problems than the European ones. This Mercedes very well could be the, the example of the perfect car from Japan, because even though it wasn't an exception to some faults, it had a couple problems when it arrived, but those were like very minor things, except the suspension, which has been recently rebuilt, but that wasn't something I, I had to worry about, and I'm very thankful for that. And yeah, as I've said, this one also had a couple problems, but basically all of them were fixed by the previous owner, so... I mean, that's great, I just, you know, get a ready-to-go car. Like I said, the suspension has been rebuilt, and, well, this car is equipped with the ABC suspension, and they are known to be prone to braking, so it has been entirely rebuilt on new components. It was very expensive, and I'm very glad to have found a car with the suspension uh, recently done, because that's one major thing we do not have to worry about. When it does work, it really is great. I mean, I don't really use it that often, but it's a very fitting feature for a car like this. But this being, well, a completely different setup than your like, standard average suspension. Here, if you leave it for more than two or three weeks without turning it on every now and then, you'll come to find your car basically sucked all the way to the ground, looking like a Civicon cheap callovers. And that's because that's just how this suspension is and there's no helping it. So even like in winter, because I don't really plan on driving this car in winter, it will spend the entire winter in, in the garage over here. You still need to turn it on, you know, drive out of the garage and then immediately come back in and we'll leave it be and do that every week or two, like I said. And well, that's how you just keep the suspension alive in this car. The plates on this car are also a bit unusual. And that's because in Poland we have this thing we unofficially call short plates. Basically, these are like plates made to accommodate for cars imported from America or Japan, so which, you know, don't have the space for your normal European size plates. And well, for some reason, they decided to make them just a bit smaller than the American ones. So if you don't use a bracket like this one, uh, the mounting holes will stick out and they just look ugly. I am looking to buy like uh, a European sized plate holder for this car. But the thing is, I searched through literally the entirety of the Polish internet and found like two for sale and both of them were damaged, had like lips missing or like the brackets snap. That's really not something I want to deal with. And since it's an S-Class Coupe, well, it doesn't have the B pillar. And that makes this like very nice open space if you roll the windows down. And it almost turns the car into like kind of a convertible when you're driving around, you know, you get a lot of like fresh air inside. And honestly, I'm kind of concerned about like it being too windy inside, but we'll just have to check it out when we go for a drive because I never really drove the car uh, with the windows down yet. And yeah, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of driving with the windows down, so even if it doesn't turn out to be a thing for me, when it's like standing in place, you know, being parked somewhere or something, it just looks really nice with the windows down. I mean, you can clearly tell that they designed the whole car in mind with like this well, feature, or to put it simply, it just looks heckin' nice. And even if you're driving with the windows closed, thanks to the lack of the B pillar, the visibility in this car is just great it's like nothing you can get in a, any normal car i mean you just look left or right on an intersection or something and you see everything nothing is obstructing your view and even if the windows are closed you know there's still nothing in there because the thing that connects those two windows is just this very thin and small like weather seal so again great visibility the trunk opens up very i guess rapidly it just kind of shoots, shoots upwards so you have to be mindful of that and well see and the first time I tried opening it, I didn't know that, obviously. So I just kind of instinctively tried to catch it with my hand and it just immediately slipped out. And what ended up happening was that it just hit me in the jaw really, really hard and basically almost knocked all my teeth out. So if you're ever around the seal and, well, you want to open the trunk, just remember not to do that because it'll hurt. And also, goddamn, this trunk smells bad. It smells like a thousand rotten cabbages and I'm not even kidding. It has soft closing. 
Same as the doors, actually. See? And that car came out in 98, I think. So just imagine having stopped closing doors in the 90s. Being stuck in here in the hole. Four square meters is kind of getting tiring, but you'll have to excuse me because I literally waited for like three days for it to stop raining and it didn't. Like, what am I supposed to do at this point? There's not that much leg room in the back or, or well, to be honest, any room at all. I've tried running in here in the back once and well, if you get in somehow, it's kind of fine. I mean, I was really struggling for headroom back in there, but the worst part is just getting out. Like you get this very weird angle when getting out and it's very easy. That's what I did for the first time. It's very easy to just kind of get your foot caught up on this plastic. And well, what I did was just uh, take it with me. So, you know, it just got stuck on my leg and I just took it with me outside. And yeah, you, you, we don't want that, obviously. So even though like you can somehow squeeze in there, getting out is the worst part. It's more like space for groceries or I don't know, shopping bags or whatever, maybe like a child. But if I were an adult who has to write in this for like more than half an hour, nah, man, not for me. And over here, this is kind of funny. Uh, this car could be optioned out with ventilated seats. And well, this one doesn't have those. And so what they did instead of just designing a whole new another switch, they just put two separate switches for heated seats. So, uh, you know, like one is in the place where normally the ventilated ones would be. So we just get like two separate switches for two levels of heating. And they also did the same thing for the mirrors. So you've got two separate buttons for unfolding and folding your mirrors. And even, I mean, like uh, over here, I can guess that they did it because it was just a way of cost cutting, but here, why? The steering will take some getting used to because it's very thin and well, it's massive. It's like it was taken straight from a bus. And well, at first I really wasn't that fond of it, but after driving the car for a bit, I kind of grew to like it. It's very clear that this car, like the entire vehicle was designed with highways in mind. This is like a car that you get in, do 2000 kilometers on a highway and get out not tired at all. And that's the reason for the steering wheel being so big. So, you know, I personally, Kind of grew to like it but in the city it's exactly as impractical as it thing here you've got this well candle i guess that's supposed to make the car smell like uh what is it again black cherries yeah black cherries because this car smells like i don't know like my grandma's basement it smells really bad so i just prefer i guess my car to smell like black cherries instead of the basement this is where the phone lives or well at least it should because it's not here and I'm pretty sure it just got kidnapped by one of the previous owners. Some very nice wood trim in great condition. Man, I love wood trim. And this one has literally no cracks, like at all. There's a single crack in the entire car and it's over here. I did the smart thing and just turned the camera flash on. Yeah, it's the one right here. And honestly, it's kind of, it's, it's way bigger than I thought <laughs> now that I shone some light on it. So maybe I should just turn it off before I find any more. So let's just keep on believing that this is the only one in the car. Look at the AC controls. If you want to adjust it manually, you have to press on this knob and then it just kind of pops out. It makes this very deep, satisfying sound. I just love pressing these, man. I could press them all the time. When it pops out, you can adjust the AC manually. So, you know, like set it to the windshield or whatever. And also actually, uh, I kind of forgot about this feature. This car has a charcoal filter over here. And if you don't know what it does, it's basically like an air filter for your car. So it should like make the air from the outside cleaner when it comes out of the vents. Over here, you have a bunch of features, very fitting for a flagship Mercedes from the early 2000s. And very quickly going over, then we have the rear sunshade, the parking sensors, the ABC sport button. And what this button does is basically it makes the suspension stiffer. Then you've got the ABC suspension height regulation, then the locking and unlocking buttons, which for some reason are separate. Then we have the traction control. Over here, you have the button responsible for the rear headrest and well, more specifically for unfolding and folding them automatically. And it's a very useful thing, I love this feature a lot. And then over here we've got this button which I was wondering about for the longest time and actually I had to read up on it in the manual. And basically what it does is the car is equipped with a car alarm. This is basically just a button for turning it off. So you know, when you're like towing the car or something, you press it so the car won't scream at you when you move it. Put operated, parking brake. The armrest has this very cool coin holder. Then you've got the head unit and for some reason the screen is very scratched up and I have no idea why because it's not even a touchscreen. 
but for some reason someone was heavily touching it before <laughs> however that sounds uh yeah but uh what i found very interesting about it is that well in, in terms of design and looks it looks very standard and not that special but uh what makes it stand out is the way you insert cds into this thing so let me just turn it on get the mercedes logo very cool then some japanese text that oh shit copyright and so you know you've got your head unit on and you want to insert a cd right so you press the disc button over here obviously and just watch what happens the whole screen just moves up to reveal the cd slot i mean how cool is that yeah it's very over engineered but it's just cool isn't it it's a it's a party check at most but don't you want to have the screen go up every time you insert a cd of course you do and then the same thing happens for the mini disc which the bottom for them is over here on the left but instead the screen just goes down yeah i mean again like just how cool of a feature is that it's absolutely useless but it's just cool and yeah i know that bmw offered something similar at the time but uh, in their case the screen would just kind of like tilt and then reveal the cd slot and i mean yeah that's also cool <laughs> it's not like it's not but over here like you would never expect the screen to just move like it doesn't look like it's movable at all so when i pressed the button for the first time and saw the whole screen just move to reveal the cd slot i was just like it just caught me so off guard i was basically like flabbergasted you'd never expect the screen to be moving in this thing and also uh, as far as i'm aware this unit was exclusive to the japanese market so you only got this radio in japan another unusual thing thanks to the vehicle's japanese origins is just look what happens when i turn the ignition on Yeah, this woman will talk to you in Japanese about a car being missing. And what she means by that is that, well, this car is, I think, from Tokyo. And in Tokyo, they have these, like, expressways throughout the whole city. And I'm pretty sure they're paid. So you can have this device that basically allows you to pass through the toll booths without stopping. And yeah, it's clearly here. The first part of the device is over here. Like this little black box. And this is what probably sends the signal to the toll booths. And then the other one is all the way in the footwell right here. And this is probably the main part of the device. And as you can see, like the lady said, there is no card inside and well, that's why she is a bit concerned about our card situation. And uh, you may think, is it kind of annoying to have like this woman talk to you every time you turn the car on? And honestly, no. <laughs> I mean, I know what she says, but like, I guess if you couldn't understand Japanese, you could uh, think that maybe she's saying hello. And even I like pretending that the car is just welcoming me when I turn it on. And well, since I don't really mind it, I find it quite actually endearing, so it'll stay. i show you guys the engine bay, but because of the lack of space, there's absolutely no way of me being able to open it and show you guys around, so this will have to wait for a different time. So the plan was to now go for like a little drive, maybe record a couple of clips where you can hear the engine better or something, but thanks to the terrible weather, as I've mentioned many times before, we'll kind of have to reschedule that for a different day. And well, to me that means waiting God knows how long, to you that means a waiting time of approximately three seconds thanks to the magic of youtube and editing so yeah i'll have to wait for better weather record a couple clips maybe like record a couple beauty shots and that should be it
as you can see, we are driving with the windows open and honestly it's not, not loud inside. I mean, it is loud, but like it's not windy, at least not as much as I expected it to be. And it all just somehow just works. I mean, really, it's great. Like driving it with the windows open and getting fresh air inside, just beautiful. And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you're even slightly interested in the weird things I have to say and do, feel free to check out my previous video, which was about the Skoda, the car that carried me all the way to even buy the Mercedes in the first place. Anyways, again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.